Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I wanted to talk about constructing uh, three-dimensional models in Rhino, uh, how to um, approach solid modeling of um, the Prison and case study that we have. Um, in this particular case, it's um, the Winton Guest House by Frank Gehry. And begin constructing um, models that we can use for design drawings, diagrams, and um, even potentially 3D printing experiments. And the way we do that is by generating uh, closed poly surfaces. Uh, what that means is, uh, as you can see here, this model is constructed using these items. And uh, whenever I click on overlapping ones, it gives me this option. And here you can see poly surface. Over here you can see that I'm that I've chosen three poly surfaces as well. So additionally if we go into properties and details it'll tell me that it's a uh, closed solid poly surface meaning it doesn't have holes uh, and the general theory behind it is if we draw uh, a boundary representation object like this uh, it's actually uh, it's a poly surface because it has many many surfaces so if we exploit this it has a total of six separate surfaces that it's made out of um, we can join them together and Rhino will think it's uh, one continuous closed object. Um, we can have non-closed objects like this. Um, so in this particular case we want to get to the point where these objects are, are, are fully closed um, primarily because we want to generate um, drawings out of this model. Uh, so uh, if I go and construct a clipping plane, I'm just going to show what I'm talking about. When you cut through this geometry, you'll see what I mean. Let's not move this. Let's just move. Okay, so here we can see as we're cutting through here, we see that the crochet is completely solid. Um, to the extent that it's uh, not overlapping with other rooms. Uh, additionally, what we could do, if we wanted to print, let's say, this whole thing in one piece, what we could do is grab these objects and join them, boolean them together, and that will create one continuous um, object as well. Uh, but, I mean, if we simply ex exported this into, let's say, Illustrator or other vector program, we'll have no problem of creating design drawings that show the poche where the cut line is made, um, what, are, what are the elements that are sort of in the back of the drawing, uh, and uh, what is the depth of the uh, sort of trying to communicate the depth in, in the drawing that we are making. So that's very important. Um, going back to the layer structure here, so all of these 3D objects on this layer. Um, another thing you can see here are these uh, lines that represent uh, cladding. And the way they were made is by simply projecting them from a, an elevation onto these B reps. And they can be turned off here by turning off cladding. We can also turn off glass planes. It's very important actually to create a kind of structure, layer structure that you can understand and comprehend. Uh, and ideally other people can understand and comprehend also. Over here we have our 2D uh, drawings. If we expand that, we'll see that they're organized by line weight and line type. Uh, and as you can see, the basic idea of line weights is to actually, again, give depth to your drawings to clearly identify which objects are closer to the eye and which objects are further away, which lines are more important than other lines. So for instance, um, the the lines that identify the edge boundaries of shapes are more important than the ones that identify cladding boundaries or a window frame uh, or any one of the door frames etc. Um, so that's the general kind of overview overview of that and uh, in this in this tutorial what I wanted to do is I wanted to begin constructing this uh, house and maybe go over some of the techniques that we use and to show some of the things that perhaps not to do 
and some of the problems that I've seen students run into over the years. So to begin with, I will place the appropriate elevations to corresponding uh, facades. So this one is the south elevation of this building. And I'm going to position it relative to that. And I'm going to position the west elevation relative to this part of the facade. Um, I'm not going to model the whole building, but I am going to uh, give you some idea of some of the more challenging aspects of uh, modeling. So I'm not going to uh, arrange all of these, but ideally you would have four elevations corresponding to all of the sides of the building, um, as well as a section and a plan. Uh, as the more reference drawings you have, the, the more information you will have when modeling. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate these in three dimensions using rotate three commands. Uh, so now we'll have some reference when we're doing vertical elements in our model. Uh, we could probably bring them closer together like so. Okay. So there's a number of ways we can go about modeling. Uh, kind of very common method that people tend to use is by creating solids like this. Uh, so I'm using a box three point component to create, uh, begin creating these walls here, uh, like so. It's a fairly inefficient method in so far as the number of steps required to arrive at any kind of geometry. Uh, and as you can see, uh, if I wanted to draw this aperture here, a sliding door, I will need to, I'm losing access due to this viewport. Um, if, if you want to see through walls, so to speak, you can always go into this viewport and change it from shaded or otherwise to wireframe, and you'll be able to see through walls. And again, you have to be super precise because um, any kind of mistake will result in uh, things not going your way. So here what I did is I've modeled uh, three boxes, two corresponding to walls and one corresponding to the sliding door. And usually what people do is they try to bully in difference the door from the wall to get that aperture. But in this case, you see that because they were not properly aligned, I get this mistake here, which uh, doesn't fully take that solid out. So that's something to watch out for. Another thing that I've seen quite a lot of people do is select uh, curves and simply extrude them. Um, that creates a problem because um, you don't get that additional level of detailing in all of the facades of that object. So you have to go back with the same old three point box and actually fill in all of these details and then boolean them together. So you have to fill in this detail, you have to fill in all of these. Um, and it might be an easier um, uh, method than some, some of the other ones. You just have to sort of choose uh, depending on the kind of situation you're in. Uh, my preferred method is by uh, first drawing all of the curves and then uh, extruding them. So let's say if we were modeling this part of the facade, uh, let's say I would select the poly curve and I would actually trace out um, this part here. You always have to make sure that things snap to what you want them to snap, otherwise you will end up with um, mistakes. So I'm just using, um, I'm holding control to get the vertical elements. So I'm taking a reference from XY plane, I'm hold shift and then I drag it up to reference either from this elevation or if I have some references already in place I use those. So in the end I end up with this uh, curve 
Another thing that I'm missing is this window over here. Uh, so I could either go back here with a polyline and draw that in, or I could use a rectangle tool and just draw, draw it in like so. And to, oh, it looks like I made a mistake. Uh, let's take it from the outside like that. And take the height and that should do it. So now if we select these, we can extrude them. So there you have it, a wall. Now there's another variation uh, of uh, this method. Uh, it, it involves slightly less steps. So instead of actually drawing in or tracing one of the elevations, you can literally take all of the curves here. Um, let's see how messy this is. So let's say I want to draw this part of the elevation. So I'm taking all of these curves um, it looks like there's some messing is going on, so I just have to quickly clean this up. Let's make sure this all makes sense. So let's say that's a crucial part of that. Uh, what we could do is we could actually take these important curves actually project them onto this side. In order to do that, we need some kind of surface to project them onto. Um, so tap in pl uh, plane, not plan. Just go, I have to go back to perspective. Um, I accidentally tapped in plan. Um, I needed plane. And you did a vertical plane, preferably. So I'm just going to draw a vertical plane here. Now, in order to project this, these objects onto this project, uh, this plane, we need a direction, and the direction is relative to the z-axis. So we need to actually see construction plane. And I'm going to quickly go into options and turn the grid on, so I can see what I'm doing. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Um, and I actually what I need to change is I, the Z direction is up so if we try to project it will project up instead of um, uh, this in this direction so I'm going to quickly check which direction I want to project it to I'm going to project it into the right uh, direction over here I can see it because I'm projecting this part here so in order to change the orientation of the C plane, we're going to C plane and we're going to uh, world and we go into either uh, left or right and we will change the orientation at C plane. Now what we can do is we can go project. We select objects that we want to project, then we select the object onto which we want to project and it projects that geometry well let's um, try exploding it and projecting and then join it there you go so we've what we've done essentially is we've projected these curves onto this construction plane so now we can extrude that and achieve a wall component here um, and in order to return this construction plane to its origin we go construction plane um, world and top and it will put it back to where it belonged now some instances like here uh, you need either a section because you don't really have access to the information how high this uh, frame uh, this um, uh, um, uh, door is so 
I'm going to assume it's as high as the external door. So I'm going just to draw around it like this. Looks like I already made a mistake here. Whoa. Okay, so I'm going to stick to this point, then it's this point, this point. I need to drag it all the way up here. And now we can extrude this this way. Um, more simple solutions like this wall here, we can see that it doesn't have any apertures. The only thing it has is um, these uh, facade elements, these plates, which we can again project with the construction plane method uh, and get all of our facade detailing in. Um, but for this, I'm just going to draw this as a um, also looks like we have a kink here in the kitchen area. Oops, that didn't work out. So let me try this again. So once you have your walls, uh, you might watch out because because there's so many weird angles in this building. Uh, some instances are overlapping each other, so you might have to trim them against each other. After you do that, however, you can select all of these walls and Boolean union them together. Uh, and it looks like in this instance, something has failed. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly check for bad objects. Uh, looks like there are no bad objects. Uh huh. There is a polysurface with an open face. So what I might do. So I might select everything and just cap it. And that will create flat surfaces um, through holes that don't already have them. And I'm just gonna Boolean union this again. And it looks like it failed again. So obviously there's some kind of problem. Um, I'll try to Boolean union this thing step by step just to see exactly where the problem is. So it looks like it's in this facade here. So it doesn't, not quite sure what it is. So I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just redraw it first. I'm going to duplicate face border of this, delete this and just select the duplicated face border and extrude it again. like so and then try to um, I need to fix that first and then try to boolean union it again and that sh that that worked so sometimes redrawing things helps just to get rid of some of the small mistakes now as you can see there are some uh, overlapping surfaces which is not a big problem because if you want to copy this um, It's still a close poster. But just to make it a little bit clearer, we can select it and tap in Merge All Faces. And that will uh, get rid of coplanar uh, surfaces and just make makes our geometry a little bit cleaner. Um, so another method for kind of drawing walls in is um, to actually, uh, let's say, if we were drawing this uh, lounge central space, uh, we could theoretically trace over uh, space like this. So we essentially what we're doing is we retracing these walls and we offset them um, by the thickness of this wall here. Something like this. Um, so essentially what we did is we redrew these walls without the actual apertures and then we could proceed to extrude it like so or rather 
like so, in reference to our bit here. And then what we could do is we could go into wireframe. Uh, we can fill in um, we construct the apertures as boxes like this. So and I can just reference the existing geometry here. And if we have uh, a window or something like that, we can hold on to control and just reference uh, it from elevation. Then reference the existing points and then extrude it up to the height of that window because that window in elevation corresponds to this window in plan. And now we have a uh, uh, aperture that is a little bit off. Sometimes instead of drawing uh, B reps that perfectly align with the um, uh, with the wall, sometimes you might want to uh, offset them a little bit like this, so that um, you have a little bit of tolerance. Um, just in terms of overlap when you construct these things. So if we go back into shaded viewport, we get this um, bound, bounding box, uh, sorry, bounding representation with all of these um, extrusions in it. You can select them and Probably a good idea to group them together. And now if we go and Boolean difference these out of these, uh, we should get and it looks like this one didn't quite work. And that's probably due to the fact that, well, let's have a look. If we explode this, deselect this surface and join this back together. Now let's just um, try to um, fix this. Um, another thing we could do is we could duplicate face border. Oh, I see. Uh, let's just explode this for now. Get rid of this surface. and then join it back together and try to cap it and that should get rid of that problem so there you go so sometimes you get these kinds of um, faces that are not properly boomed out and that's due to uh, tolerances um, in, in that boolean operation so the best idea is to explode everything and just try to rebuild the part of the geometry that didn't work um, now, let's construct a little bit more isoteric geometry, like this pyramid here. Uh, the way I would go about it is um, I would grab some of the information that relates to the tip of it, like here in plan. So I'm just going to quickly explode it and join it together and then move it vertically, like up to about here. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it relative to this thickness here and that was already uh, Rhino remembers the offset operation inputs if you did them before. So that offset it uh, to equal measure. So now uh, we have curve that defines the outside of that pyramid, a curve that defines the inside of that pyramid. Now we can extract curves from the top of this wall by duplicating phase border. Like so, we get two curves. And now what we could do is we, if we select 
the inside and outside curves. Um, well, let me, let me actually do this. I'm going to select all of these curves, invert and hide, so we, we can just see what we're doing. So we can select the inside curves and we can run a loft command. And what loft will do is it will create a surface through these two curves. So we get this little menu that tells us some of the options. Uh, if we click OK, as you can see, it, it generates this surface. And we can do that same thing to the outside uh, surface, like so. For the top and bottom, what we could do is we could just generate planar surfaces. I can select all of my curves, delete them, select all of these surfaces and join them together. And thus you have uh, a closed poly surface. And if I just go into show, that brings up um, the rest of the scene. So that's uh, how you begin to kind of construct more isoteric types of geometries. Um, it's a very similar method to constructing this room here as well. Uh, it's a very similar type of method. Um, now the this room here is a little bit more tricky because it's um, essentially what it is is it's an intersection of two extrusions, which essentially creates what seems like a fairly random shape. Um, which has a lot of curves, but in fact, all of these curves, um, they are flat in one direction. So this curve is derives from this elevation here, and this curve essentially derives from the plan. So we can take advantage of that. Um, so if we, I think we can even grab these uh, curves from this elevation here. So we copy this and we bring it over here. Select last is a useful command that selects geometry that you had selected previously. So that if you had it if you if you had a bunch of stuff selected and you accidentally clicked on something else, you can always go sell last and it will bring you back to whatever you had selected last, and that's kind of a handy tool to have. Um, and in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to uh, maybe trace over some of this stuff here just to get me the, the outlines of the outside of this plan. So like this. And what I'm missing here is this curve. Um, the way I'm going to get it is I'm going to use one of these arc tools just to try to match it to this drawing. It doesn't look like it wants to, but I think it'll be... No, I think... It mm, doesn't, mat doesn't matter. I think it'll be good enough. So what we could do is we could uh, extrude this and then extrude this horizontally and then trim both shapes against each other like so and what we get is oops join them together until we get an outside wall of that room um, to generate the the internal space well, we just repeat the whole process um, so I'm just going to copy this over here and I'm going to scale it down. Like so. And for the curve, I'm going to simply offset it. Uh, the distance will be the thickness of this wall. So I can grab this and extrude it up. And grab this curve, 
extrude it horizontally, trim one against the other. Uh, now put this back in and what I'll try to do is I'll try to blend different uh, one shape from the other. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It sort of depends on how well you've constructed your geometry. Sometimes you get minor misalignments and things like that that cause things to break. But um, usually these problems are very solvable. So I, I just, I just, uh, what I did there, I made sure that um, uh, I had a poly surface rather than a bunch of surfaces. And now I'm going to run boolean intersection one more time, and it looks like it failed there again. So to troubleshoot, I'll try to select bad objects. It looks like these are not bad objects. Another thing that I can do is I can run show edges command and that will tell me which edges of the geometry are actually naked. So they're not they're not closed. So it looks like this has a naked edge. Um, and it looks like this one also has a naked edge. Um, just to just to as an example. Uh, just so you know for your information, if I draw something like this and I explode it, get rid of one of the surfaces and I join it together. So this is a naked edge because it's not connecting to any other surfaces of that B-Rep. So if I add objects, it'll, it'll tell me that that's a na naked edge. If I explode the whole thing, everything will be a naked edge. So that's, that's the kind of theory behind that. Um, so this this is a useful tool because it tells me what the problem is um, and I can then begin to try to address it maybe wait a second okay let me just drag that out as well so what I'm going to do I'm going to explode this and I'm going to deselect Oh, it looks like there's multiple surfaces. That could have been the problem. Okay, now it looks correct. Now I'm going to exploit this one. And I'm going to get rid of some of these surfaces. Another way of figuring out if you have doubles if you select dub command, it will uh, be able to tell you which objects have been duplicated. So I have quite a few. You can just delete them. In this particular case, it looks like there's some difference between this and this. It's a bit harder to tell. Um, but if you ever need to get rid of duplicates, um, cell dub is a nice kind of tool to have. So now it looks like these have been fixed and I can uh, return them back to their original position um, and I can run boolean difference select the big one and then the small one and now we have a space that has been subtracted from uh, the bigger shape and um, you can do the same thing for the um, windows to generate apertures and things so that's essentially theoretically how you would approach modeling this house uh, some of the problems that you might run into which I'm going to quickly cover is some instances you might have let me just draw this wall here something like this um, which you might want you would like to extrude yeah so 
here it extrudes perfectly this is a closed poly surface however if I turn control points on and I move one of these points just slightly out of plane this no longer becomes a, a flat surface and now if I try to extrude it um, direction this way you'll see, you'll notice that it doesn't map and that's because both of these surfaces aren't actually flat so you can't um, you can't do that unfortunately so what you have to do uh, is if you know where the problem is is to return that point back in plane however oftentimes it's unclear where that point is um, you know even by looking at um, flattened views it's hard to work out where this point actually what I might do it's really hard to tell which objects are selected so I'm just quickly going to change this color to something a little bit more clear okay there you go so it's it's a little bit difficult to to tell um, where which point is actually out of plane um, so quick fix for that is to actually generate or re reconstruct this plane so we'll go C plane uh, and we go three points and what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a construction plane around this axis here and I just used I held control and I pulled it up to generate my Y axis so now if we project we select this curve and we project it to C plane it will instead of uh, projecting down onto, onto the ground it will project onto our new construction and now if we were to extrude this we'll find that it works perfectly and it produces a closed poly surface um, and again if you want to project if you want to flatten curves that are on the ground uh, you obviously use uh, top uh, uh, C plane and you do it that way um, another problem you might run into is curves that are self-intersecting and self-intersection looks something like this this is where they self-intersect so you might have to um, whenever you encounter it it, it kind of depends on how well your plan has been constructed or how well your drawings have been constructed so whenever you encounter this problem whenever something doesn't extrude or doesn't extrude properly but everything seems to be flat um, you might just have a closer look and just see um, that all of the points connect to each other and they're actually um, there's no kind of small self intersections so that's basics of troubleshooting some of the problems of uh, constructing solids in Rhino um, uh, that's pretty much all I have for today uh, I might I, I might keep uploading these tutorials and I might cover some advanced geometry and uh, illustrator in later sessions um, but for now hopefully you got something out of this and um, I'm looking forward to seeing your models thanks for watching